I want to do a video about Satan. And the reason I want to do a video about Satan is the name Satan is so misunderstood. And don't take me wrong, I'm not trying to be an apologetic for the Satan. The problem is, I haven't heard actually anybody out in public anywhere actually define what Satan is according to their Bible, their scriptures, the Hebrew writings. Now what you're looking at here is an example of the ancient writings using the Hebrew word that is identified as H7854 and that is in, translated as the name Satan. But what you're looking at here is the pictograph form. The top row of pictographs, the first one is the Sha, the second one is the Tha, and the third one is the Na. The middle row shows them separately. The first row is a cursive form of writing, a flowing form of writing where the pictures are interconnected. At the very bottom, you could call that the longhand form of the writing of the name Satan. And as you see, there's the Sha symbol, there's the Ha symbol, or the He symbol. Well, that's actually Ha, because of, as you see, it's blue in color. And if you looked at the coloring system that I had shown before, the blue indicates the A, or the Ha. The next is the Tha, and then there's the bull symbol, which is the E, or the E, and then there's the Na symbol, and then there's the Ha symbol again. And I'll show you further along what it is I'm attempting to explain here. This is kind of new, trying to explain this to people. Here's the very first symbol, the Sha. The shower is female breasts, and this is the longer hand form of it, with the ha symbol, which indicates the vowel form that's being used, which means that the picture does not indicate breasts itself, but it indicates the meaning of breasts, the symbolic meaning of breasts. Of, of breasts and one of the symbolic meanings of breasts is fruit. Now you're gonna say geez this guy's a fruit he's freaking crazy what do you mean breasts are fruit? Well you know something sometimes thing, thing, truth comes through in the strangest forms. Now you've heard people call women's breasts melons. I mean that's what they look like but in the fundamental sense now you have to realize that when you're dealing with pictures pictographs. It's the character is what's being shown. That's what's, what's being shown with pictures. Now a fruit, what is a fruit? A fruit is something that comes from a, it's a, comes from a plant. So when people talk about fruit of the spirit or any other kinds of fruits, are they talking about plants? No, they are not. They're talking about the characteristics. Now what is the characteristic of a fruit that comes from a plant? Well, the characteristic of a fruit that comes from a plant is nutrition. Now whether it's a human being that takes nutrition from the fruit or what it's really designed for is nutrition for the children of the plant. Now that's the same character in a human being, for example, where a woman's breasts are for the nutrition of her children. Now in plant fruits, what makes a plant fruit a fruit is it has seeds within it. And the seeds, those are the children of the plant. And the rest of the fruit offers the nutrition for the plant to get started after the fruit drops away from the plant, the vine. Now that's kind of a whole lot of talking which I don't know if it really accomplished anything 
anybody, but I'm just trying to get to the point of trying to assist people in understanding the characteristics of pictographs and how to view them and how to look at them. And what better one to start off with than dealing with the name Satan and female breasts? I mean, because, hey, we live in a culture where it's different than other cultures around the world. But I guess that's another topic. I'm not going down this road in order to bother anybody or anything like that. Because some people get offended just by, you know, a picture of female breasts. Not, not a true picture. It's not a snapshot of anything or anything like that. But, hey, that's how prudish some people are. And I, and I believe that is for a reason. I believe religions has trained that for a reason because religions know the day was coming to see this. The religions knew that. So anyhow, that's the first aspect of Satan. Fruit. The second one is the Tha. What is the Tha? Tha is a basket or a city, but typically a basket. So we have the fruit. We have the basket. And then what's the third characteristic in the name Satan? Now this name Satan, I didn't make this up. This is, this is the Hebrew word. And I'm showing you the ancient pictographs where they're associated with the letters. Which in Hebrew, a name denotes the characteristic of the entity. So this is the characteristics of Satan. Not the only singular ones. Because there are different there are multiple meanings that can come out of these but with pictographs with characteristics they're going to be all the characteristics of the same thing so nah that's the last one nah what's that now nah is a seed that's a sprouting seed anybody who gardens and anybody who's seen a seed sprout knows that you know yeah that is essentially what it what a seed looks like, isn't it? There's a seed and there's a sprout coming out from it. So that means life or activity. So we have fruit. Then we have basket. And then we have life. That's the Satan. So what is it? Do you get it? I get it. I understand it. For those of you that understand the writing, excuse me. For those of you that, that understand the writings that are in the Bible, you might already understand what fruit basket life means. I'll give you a moment to think about it all on your own because, you know, it's always better that people think on their own and that they don't just take anybody's sole word for it and take take it for granted that they research themselves and take deeper inside themselves and read and understand and you know I'm just a human being yourself you're just a human being we're fallible but we should try we should try to get some further understanding. We should not be taking what religions have been pounding into people. They not only have been pounding into people, they have been terrorizing people. They have been murdering people throughout the ages in order to institute their thoughts. So could their thoughts possibly be right by having to do that to people for hundreds and even thousands of years? Or are they doing that to cover something up? In my opinion, they're doing that to cover something up. But also, in my opinion, they also know the cat's about to come out of the bag, so to speak. That's an old saying. The cat's about to come out of the bag. The cat's out of the bag. And I say that because, you know, I, I go on the Internet and I look at lots of things and 
when I research things like this, such as Satan. It's like, okay, I want to do a video on Satan. I have my own opinions about it. I've done my own research, but I look more. I look around. I see what's going on around in the country, around the world, and what academics think, and what religious people think, and what secular people think, and what all the different types of people think. And I try to gather in all that information. I try to sift through it and try to find some kind of truths that are within it and what p different types of people and what their understandings are. And in the state of Oklahoma, in the city known as Oklahoma City, where the Capitol building is, there's a statue that's supposed to be erected by the Church of Satan out of New York. And that statue is a statue of Baphomet. And Baphomet is a made-up character. It was made up in the 1800s, and it resembles an Egyptian character. But people claim that this is a Satan. It's an example of Satan. You could say that. Now, I know by looking at that Baphomet, I know what it is. And it's not what the religions have been teaching anybody. But I also, <laughs> sorry, I, I just find this so humorous. I also saw, find it very appropriate for it to be put up at a Capitol building of any state. Or even if it was put up at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., the United States Capitol. Because I know what the Satan is. You should know what the Satan is by now. It's the fruit basket life. Do you know what the fruit basket life is yet? Think about it. Come on. I'm giving you some time to think on your own. Fruit basket life. Fruit basket life. What could that mean? Fruit basket life. Fruit basket life. Okay. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag for you. The fruit basket life is tithing. The fruit basket life is personal income taxes. That's the fruit basket basket life. It's oppression of a people. It's taking personal belongings from individuals. That's what it is. That's what the Satan is. That's what the Satan has always been. And I'll show this using the scriptures, the Bible, which, you know, some people say that the scriptures are just so holy and pure and all that kind of stuff. Okay, fine. We'll go that route. Now, I use a program called ESORD, and I went into ESORD, and I typed in the name Satan. And what came up? Well, Satan comes up in 1 Corinthians chapter 21, verse 1 is the very first time that the name Satan comes up in the scriptures. So, an individual that uses any type of thought would say, well, gee, there must be something to tell us what this Satan is with the very first time that the name shows up. That, that would make logical sense, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. So I'm going to read what, what I found there. Oh, I need my glasses on. These aren't rose-colored <laughs> rose glasses either. 1 Corinthians 21.1 And Satan stood up against Israel and provoke David to number Israel. And I put here in a note. In this chapter, Satan, Shathano, means fruit basket life, which is the tithing system. What did the tithing system want from David in this? It wanted an accounting from David. And in chapter, I mean, excuse me, and in 1 Corinthians 21, Three, it is shown that all were not willing participants in the tithing system. As it says in 1 Corinthians 21, 3, And Joab answered the Lord, Make his people an hundred times so many more as they, but my Lord the King, they are not all my Lord's servants. Why then doth my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Now, there's a couple of things wrong in here. And a couple of things wrong in here is such as I picked out was where it says, as they were not all my lords. 
servants. What does my Lord's servants also mean or could mean or what I believe actually does mean? I see by changing the, reducing the words, okay? Diluting the words to my Lord's from what it could really mean and diluting the word down to servants from what it could mean makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And it's funny because if you look at the statue that's supposed to be put up at Oklahoma City, if you research it and you research about Baphomet, you'll see Baphomet has like tattoos on his arms. And on his arms, the words that are tattooed on there, one means dilute and the other means coagulate. Do we understand what it means? One means solvent, which means to dilute, and the other means to coagulate, which means to bring back together. This is what has happened with the scriptures. The scriptures have been diluted. They were brought back together. But were they brought back together properly? I see further dilution here. So if you bring this particular scripture back together, you will get a further understanding of what the Satan really is. So if you look at the word that got translated as my lords, which is Adone, and if you look at the uh, Hebrew word H113, you will see that it has a meaning of controller. That word can easily be inserted there instead of my lords, would be the controllers. And then you go on to the next one where it says servants, where the word is a va more vague word, a diluted word of servant. There's a more firm meaning word, a more proper word that could have been used, but it was not. The translation was chosen to be vague, to be dilute, to be solvent. So if we look at that word, and that word that was translated as servants is H5650, which is a bed. Now it says here, it says could mean servant, but means bondage or bond man. Okay bond man. So this easily could read that all the controllers bond men. So we'll read this again, I guess. And Joab answered the Lord, make his people an hundred times so many more as they be, but my Lord the King, they are not all the controllers bond men. Why then doth my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I understand the concept of a bondman. Do you? you? You should. I mean, if you're a person that claims to be learned in the scriptures and study the Bible and study the culture, you should understand what a bondman is. That means there's a bond, right? There's an agreement between two parties to do something. Now, in the case of Israel, a bondman was used as voluntary slavery. That's what a bondman was. And the bondman was a slave in the respect that he pledged his labor in order to be taken care of. But nonetheless, it was a form of slavery. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. You've got to be careful. I mean, hey, I'm all for freedom, all right? I'm for freedom. I'm in for independence. I don't like the concept of slavery. I don't like the concept of slavery, even if it's as ambiguous as some religious cult that gathers up people and says, hey, we got a better way for you to live because life sucks out there in the general cities and environment. They're not wrong about that. 
But life sucks out there in the general cities in the environment in order to cause people to get into these groups to become become bond men and bond women where there's a sole entity or a sole individual that owns the land and all the people in there work the land, okay? And just as in the ancient times, the person who's in control of that land, who's in control of that basket, okay, who's in control of that city, he's the one that's going to have to pay taxes to the Yawa, the warlord the government, the military, the one that has the ability to arrest, the one that has the ability to prosecute, okay, the one that has the ability to persecute in so-called a legal fashion, okay? In the United States of America, the IRS is the federal system of taxation, is the federal Satan, okay? Are you understanding the concept of Satan now? And tithing and fruit basket? That's what it is. But it's a personal tax level is what the tithing was. And that's what is being shown in 1 Corinthians. Now the first example, the way that Israel was operating was essentially the tithing. If you go back to where Jacob promises to pay his 10% towards the Elohim or the El which is the bull deity, okay? What he was pro he was promising to pay that, but all these other people that come forward, where all the people started multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and multiplying, they say, yeah, we got a hundred full people, and they are not all the controllers bondmen. They have not all made an agreement to hand over ten percent of their fruit, or ten percent of their cattle, or ten percent of their anything. They have not made that agreement. So why does the king allow this trespass into our country? Do you understand the concept of it now? That's what happened. It was the tithing system, a personal income tax system by the bullies. The Yawa, which were the warlords. The bullies, which were the religious people, the bola. If you look at the, I wasn't ready to add that in because I just wasn't prepared for that. But if you see the bull picture graph here, that's attached. That's the bull. Now, the bull represents an E or an A. So whenever there's L, where you see the name L which is typically translated as God, wherever you see that, the pictograph would be a bull and then the picture of a staff. But if you were to speak it out phonetically, or if you speak out the picture, which you know the picture is a bull, and the staff is the la, or the li, it would be bully, okay? The bullies, now the bullies were the religious leaders, or it was also obviously the, the deity was the bull so the bully was the religious leader is the one who carried the staff he was the bully now as we know the concept of a bully today is the same as it was back then with the religious leaders they were somebody who brutalized other people they took advantage of people who were weaker than they were that's what they did that's what they have always done and that's what the concept of it is. And through religion, they did some really atrocious things, such as sacrifices, human sacrifices. And that's the way they terrorized their people, and they kept control of their people as they took those first fruits, okay? Make no mistake about it. This was no utopia of, oh, we just give 10% back to God. And God makes rain come, and God makes sunshine. Because you know something? The people who were taking that stuff had nothing to do with the sun shining and the rain coming and all those kinds of things. All right? They may have been pretty good weather forecasters, and they could have set up some kind of religious event and fooled the population. But make no mistake about it. They were terrorists. There's a word for bully. Terrorist. That's what they were.
Now, if you're a person who's learned in these religious things and you research what is known as the papal bulls or the papal bullas, they're the papal, papal bullies. That's what they were. And if you read about the papal bullies, they describe how they're going to go out and bully the rest of the world into becoming their religion. And that's what it's always been about. So, yeah, Satan's a bully. Satan's been in the church. Satan is the church. There, I said it. Satan is the church. What church is Satan? Satan's the Jew, the, the Jewish, the synagogue, the synagogue of Satan. That's why, that's why Yahshua said that uh, the people there were the synagogue of Satan. Christian church, Satan church. People say, what? What? No, the Christian church, they say, no, Satan's bad, Satan's bad, Satan's bad, Satan's bad, Satan's bad, Satan's bad. Okay, Satan's bad. But they are, and if it was a Christian I was pointing at, you are part of the Satan. If you're involved in the fruit basket activity, you're involved in the Satan. Do they bully their people to pay tithes? They bully them with their mouth. They bully them with their mouth still. With their tongue. Their forked tongue. But they bully them nonetheless. They use peer pressure. People in the church and the organization use peer pressure at one another to get them to pay the tithe. It's all the same thing. It's all the take from people. People don't deserve what it is that they're taking from other people, but it's just a take from them. It's to control them and make them do things and say, oh, no, it's uh, uh, Satan is this freaking mystical guy with freaking horns. Is he? Baphomet, there you go. Baphomet has horns. Looks like a goat. Do you know why he looks like a goat? Who dressed up using goat skins? In your Bible. I know, I know. My, put my hand up. I know. Jacob did. Why did he do that? I know, I know. To imitate his brother in order to steal his blessing. Now, before that, what did Jacob do? Uh, his brother was starving. Yeah, that's why I remember the story. And he said, if you give me your inheritance, I'll give you a bowl of porridge. Is that an equal trade? Is that fair? Is that fair to say, okay, there's my starving brother. And we're talking, we're talking a blood brother, and he's starving. And he comes home, and his other brother's there, and he's starving. Starving, he says, I would die unless I had something more, something to eat. I need something. I'll die. And what did his brother say? Sell me your inheritance. I'll give you a bowl of lentil soup. Now that's a Jew for you. I'll give you a bowl of lentil soup for everything that you could possibly have or get or earn in all your lifetime from your father back when. There's a Jew for you. There's a Jew. There they are. They're there. Could you imagine such a horrible thing to do to anybody? No, why would he do that? We don't know if he did that. But according to the, to the writings, that's what happened. So that story is supposed to tell us something. These stories are supposed to make us learn something. Now, if we really understood the scriptures and learned and looked at the names and the characters, then we would understand what was going on. But typically, people don't look close enough. It's all there. It's all there for people to look at and understand. But they choose not to. Subliminally, they know. Because those writings that you read in the Bible, that your religious leaders tell you, you must be immersed in it. You must be immersed in it. You must not use logic. You must not use logic. You must stay immersed in it. Do you know why they do that? Other than the obvious fact that that's, that's a, uh, a way to brainwash people. 
is because the writings of the Bible have subliminal messages in them. Okay? Within the stories, there are certain characteristics within the stories that give people messages. And even though people use cognitive dissonance, so outwardly they will say something different, they still understand the concept in their mind. And it imprisons them. They're prisoned by it. Now Jacob, Jacob, he was the uh, he was a descendant of the serpent, and that's obvious because the characteristic of Jacob in the diction sense it tells you he was a heel grabber. The story says he came out grabbing his brother's heel. He was the heel catcher. Okay, and if you look back into Genesis, you will see the curse on the serpent. That he would be, what would he be doing? What would he be doing? He would be biting at the heel of the women, the woman's descendants. Hmm. Hmm. So Jacob was the serpent seed. Is there further verification about this? Well, I believe there is. I believe if you look further in Genesis, you'll see about one of Jacob's sons named Dan. And Dan is also identified to be biting at the heels of somebody and acting like a snake too. These things are not there by accident. And see, that's, that, that's where the religions have failed people. Because the religions have actually had the ability to set people free instead of imprison them. Instead, they played the part of the Satan. Now, if you look further into 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 21, you will see the results of what had happened and why the accounting was wanted of David. It was wanted to find out, obviously, was the Yahweh, the Yahweh Satan, were they getting their, their share? Were they getting their 10% out of all these people? Which they obviously weren't because the scripture said there that all these people, are uh, the control is bondmen. So, of course not. But then once they got the accounting of how many people were there with sword, they knew how many warriors to send to go get them. And that's the old-fashioned war technique is to first know how many soldiers are on the enemy's side. Now I hope I didn't go too far off track here, but I want to do a video about Satan seeing as nobody else is.